Today I'm going to go over how to seal, varnish, or protect an acrylic painting using one of my favorite products, Liquitex Gloss Varnish. I'm also going to be covering some common questions you might have before you seal or protect your painting, like do I really need to seal acrylic paint? What types of products are out there that I can use to seal acrylic paint? nine tips to help you prepare before you varnish and finally i'm going to be showing you step by step how i varnish my paintings uh, so this one is not varnished and i'm going to show you how i how i do that using the gloss varnish at the end of this video So let's start with a common question that many people have is whether or not you need to seal your acrylic painting or acrylic paint. And the answer is not clear cut. It is yes and no. And it really depends on the end goal that you want, that you wish for your painting. So let's take a step back and look what actually happens to acrylic paint when it's completely dried. So I just took a little bit of paint and I let it dry and I peeled it away. And this is what the consistency and the texture of acrylic paint is when it's completely dry. So it's soft and it's pliable. Now, if I take a little bit of water on my acrylic paint, it's not going to rub off. So it becomes water resistant when it is dried, which is really a really great property of acrylic paint. Um, unlike uh, watercolor where it can reactivate once water touches it. So sometimes I don't seal my acrylic paintings because um, I'm not so worried about it running or it uh, re reactivating once it is wet with water. However, because it is soft and pliable, it is it can be prone to scratches and also uh, depending on the quality of your acrylic paint, it can also sometimes peel um, even on canvas. So if that is a concern for you, like for example, if you're going to be shipping your paintings in the mail and you don't want to um, be worried about it scr the paint scratching or peeling off, then sealing your acrylic painting is going to be a great idea. So another property of dried acrylic paint is that it has these tiny micro pores um, when it's when it's completely dried that often attract dust and dirt. So dust and dirt can get trapped in these tiny little holes in your acrylic painting and over time that can build up, um, which is very hard to clean. Now varnishing your painting will basically uh, protect those pores and seal them so that uh, uh, dirt and dust don't get a chance to get into them. And the colors of your acrylic painting can fade over time when exposed to sunlight or UV light. And uh, most of the varnishes out there will protect against UV damage. So that's another reason if you want your uh, colors to stay true over the number of years, then and varnishing it with a, a varnish that has that UV protectant is a great idea. So another reason why artists like to varnish or seal their painting is actually for aesthetic reasons. So let's take a look at this dried paint, acrylic paint here. So if you can notice that the white portion is slightly glossier and while the turquoise part is a little bit matte. So basically different colors of acrylic paint um, and also different brands of acrylic paint can actually dry with different, slightly different sheens to them. Now, if you're concerned of having your painting have a more uniform look, having a similar sheen all throughout your painting, then applying a gloss varnish or even a matte or satin varnish will give you that uniform look so that you don't have different areas that are glossier or different areas that are more less glossier than others. And finally, one of my most favorite reasons for varnishing a painting is, especially when you're using a gloss or high gloss varnish, is that your colors are going to be brought out even more. The, the, your brighter colors are going to be even more brighter, while your darker colors even more darker and richer. So if you've ever noticed acrylic paint when it's wet, it's really vibrant and glossy and glassy. But when it dries, sometimes it becomes a little bit duller um, and less vibrant. Now applying a gloss varnish or a high gloss varnish over top will bring back that wet glassy look of your acrylic paints. And also sometimes working with slightly cheaper paints, uh, the, the, the colors are not as vibrant compared to the more expensive ones. So a nice little hack that I like to do is if you're working with the cheaper paints that are not as vibrant, vibrant and bright, then you can just seal those with a layer of gloss varnish or high gloss varnish and your colors will be even more brighter and beautiful. Now, if you're not concerned with having your painting live up to the wear and tear of time and the elements, and if you don't want to, um, if you're not concerned about bringing out more color and saturation in your colors, then varnishing is not always necessary.
So now let's go over what kind of products are out there right now that can be used to seal or varnish your acrylic painting. So one of my favorite products that I like to use is this Liquitex gloss varnish because it's really easy to use and I get that glossy sheen which just brings out my colors beautifully and it's brush on meaning I would just pour it onto my painting or on a palette and just brush it on with um, any old synthetic brush. Now there is another option where you can use aerosol varnishes. I personally haven't used them, but there is a time and place for using the aerosol or spray-on version versus the, um, the, the brush-on one. And one of them is if you're using a highly, if you're trying to varnish a highly texturized piece, so I'm going to show you an example. So this beach painting I made here, I added um, a lot of texture in the sand, so it was really bumpy and, um, and has a lot of texture to it. So for this, I would not want to use a gloss varnish, a brush on varnish on, on it, because what can happen is the gloss varnish can pool uh, between all of the texture and create um, some cloudiness in the colors. And another reason why some artists do the spray on is um, if they have a really large piece they need to hang on the wall uh, vertically and they can't lay it down horizontally then using the spray on would be um, your best bet because with the gloss varnish that you use with the brush uh, you need your painting to be lying horizontally to ap apply an even coat. But with the spray on or aerosol sealer you need to read the instructions um, because often it has a really high fumes and odor and you have to do it outside with a respirator um, so just be careful and read the instructions beforehand if you need to use the spray on varnishing now on top of having a brush on versus aerosol varnish you're gonna have different finishes of your varnishes as well so many brands have gloss high gloss satin and matte so it really depends on the the goal of your end painting and what kind of finish you want. Now another thing to look out for when shopping for varnishes is whether it is permanent or removable. So I personally like to, to work with the, remo uh, the permanent varnishes because it's often very easy, one step and done. Um, whereas the removable one, there's extra few steps you need to take to apply it. So the permanent gloss varnish is great because it's very easy to use um, one step and done but the drawback of it is that it is permanent so if you ever want to remove your varnishing coat you can't do it with a permanent one. Now for the removable varnish the great thing with that is if ever you need to remove your varnish um, to for example clean your painting and restore it then you can there's products out there that you can use to remove it um, and then reapply a new coat of varnish over top. Now the drawbacks of the removable varnish is that you often have to take an extra few steps to apply it. Uh, you need something called an isolation coat to go between the, the acrylic paint and your final removable coat. Uh, so it's an extra few steps to take it and that might not be necessary for every type of painting out there. Now let's go over nine tips that'll help you prepare before you varnish. Now, first one is to read the labels. Now, different varnishes have different instructions. Some of them require you adding water to it uh, before varnishing, some don't. So for example, this Liquitex gloss varnish, you can use right out of the bottle. You don't need to add any or mix any water in with it. So please read your labels, all the safety instructions before, um, before varnishing. Tip number two, use a flat synthetic brush to apply your paint. Um, now different artists use different brushes, uh, but personally I like to use the flat brush uh, because it gives me e nice and even application of my varnish. Now some artists also like to have a dedicated brush to um, use as for their varnish separate from the, the ones that they use for their paint. Um, I just make sure my, my bristles are really nice squeaky clean because I don't want the paint affecting my varnish um, and then I reuse that one. But another option can also be to use a separate paintbrush you use just for your varnishing. Tip number three is it's better to apply multiple thinner layers of your varnish rather than fewer thicker layers. Now what happens is if you apply a thick layer of the varnish it can actually cause something called cloudiness in your colors and um, not as transparent as when you're using a really thin coat of your varnish. Tip number four is don't overbrush. So again, just like adding a really thick layer of your varnish, if you overbrush or overwork the varnish on your canvas, it can also cause some cloudiness in the end when it's dry as well. 
Tip number five is try not to go back over areas that are drying um, with that varnish because what can happen is if you pull some of that partially dried varnish into uh, um, an area that has wet varnish, it can also uh, create some cloudiness in the end finish of that varnish. Another tip is to work in a bright or well-lit area, um, especially in bright sunlight or if you have a bright uh, light overhead, works really well when you're applying your gloss because sometimes you don't know if you've covered an area or not. And just holding your painting up to the light can show you where you've applied your varnish, whereas where you haven't. And so that can give you a little bit of a guideline of um, where to continue your varnishing. So tip number seven is to leave your acrylic paint to dry 72 hours to two weeks before you apply your varnish. And this was recommended on the Liquitex website. And the reason for this is sometimes when you're applying a really thick layer of acrylic paint, um, while it can look like it's dry to the touch on the surface, below the surface it can still be drying and still be a little bit wet and what can happen is once you apply the gloss varnish up over top of that there can be some moisture trapped below uh, between the acrylic paint and the varnish we can cause some cloudiness um, in the end painting so as a rule of thumb if it's a really thin layer of paint then 72 hours is often enough but if it's really thick uh, um, application of acrylic paint then you might need closer to two weeks for it to fully cure now tip number eight is take pictures of your painting before you varnish it. And this is especially true if you are going to be using gloss or high gloss varnishes, because what can happen is if you're taking pictures for your website, if you're selling your art or you sharing art uh, through social media, is that once the gloss is on there and you take a picture of it, uh, the reflection from the gloss can affect uh, the picture in the end. So take your pictures before you apply your gloss varnish so you can have um, those beautiful pictures pictures preserved. Now tip number nine is optional, but I find if I um, paint, get some of that gloss varnish or varnish on my hands and it dries, it's a little bit harder to get off versus the acrylic paint when it dries on your hands. So if you have sensitive skin, you can use some gloves um, while applying your gloss varnish to protect your hands from it. Uh, but the one I use here is uh, non-toxic because it has that approved product label on it. So even if it gets on your hands, it should be fine. But I have ultra sensitive skin, so I tend to use gloves sometimes to protect it from these products. Now before starting the varnishing step, you wanna make sure you lay your, plain, your painting flat horizontally uh, because if you have your painting vertically or even on an easel, then the varnish uh, can drip down because the varnish is very liquid in consistency and it needs a flat surface so it can level out as it dries. And another thing I like to do is I like to take a rag, a lint-free rag, and just wipe my painting clean of all dust or debris before I start the varnishing step. Because what can happen is if you have any dust, dust that's settled on the painting surface, then it's going to get trapped uh, when you apply the gloss varnish. All right, now I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I varnished my paintings. So this painting here is not varnished and I completed it about a week ago. So it's been dried and cured for seven days. So it's good to go. And as I mentioned earlier on in the video, my favorite product to varnish is with this Liquitex gloss varnish, which is a permanent uh, gloss varnish. Um, and also to mention with this Liquitex varnish, it's recommended not to shake it before you use it because it can cause bubbles in the varnish, which will not settle nicely once it's on your canvas. So what I like to do instead is I just like to gently stir it with like a popsicle stick or even the back of a paintbrush handle. So I'll just take my popsicle stick and I'll gently stir it just to make sure all the ingredients is nicely mixed. And then what I like to do is I like to pour it in a separate dish. Now some artists pour the varnish directly on their painting, but I prefer to have a little bit more control over where that varnish goes by uh, pouring it into um, another uh, dish here. And it's very liquid. It's not the consistency of acrylic paint. It's more like a liquid. And it's a little bit opaque. You can see it looks a little milky, but when it dries, it's gonna dry completely clear and transparent. So what I like to do is I like to take a wide, your widest flat brush that you have on hand and it's dry. So it has no water or moisture on it. And I'm just gonna pick it up on my paintbrush. And then I like to start at one side of my canvas and I, I like to work in one direction. So here I'm going to go back and forth horizontally 
and then I'm just going to lay that varnish down. Just like that. I'm not overworking it. I'm going very lightly with that paintbrush as well because I don't want to overwork that varnish, which would, could cause some fogginess in the end painting. And sometimes it's hard to see where you left off. So you can actually hold it up in the light and see where that varnish is. And then it kind of gives you a guideline of where to, where to brush next. You want to apply a really thin layer of this varnish, not too thick. As mentioned in the tip section, it's better to apply um, more thinner layers rather than fewer thicker layers because thicker layers will um, can also cause a little bit of fogginess in the end painting when it's all dried. So I'm just going over it with these horizontal back and forth strokes, making sure that I'm not pressing down too hard and also not overworking that varnish. And even if there's areas that you've missed with that varnish, it's okay. It's better to leave it to dry and then go over the, the, the places that have been missing, that are missing. So you're going to do this all the way down till you get to the bottom of your canvas. All right, once you're done, um, the bottle does say to, so for this Liquitex gloss varnish, it's recommended to apply two coats, two or three coats with a dry time of three hours in between. So I'm gonna leave this to dry um, for three hours and then I'm gonna come back to it and apply another layer of that varnish. I also wanted to mention if you have any of your varnish that is still left in your dish and you haven't cleaned off your brush and you don't want them to dry out um, while waiting for your second coat, then you can actually just take a piece of saran wrap or cling wrap and just wrap it um, over your palette and brush and that way the air doesn't get a chance to dry the, the varnish. All right, it's been three hours and the varnish is dry to the touch and it's already looking really beautiful and glossy. So you can see with the reflection on the camera, um, all those, those vibrant colors are looking really, really nice and beautiful um, with that gloss varnish on top. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna repeat the same step with that varnish using those horizontal back and forth strokes um, to apply my second coat of varnish. And once I'm done my second coat, I'm gonna leave it to dry for another three hours and then this painting is complete. I also wanted to quickly mention that I have a brand new abstract intuitional painting workshop uh, that basically guides you to making really unique abstract pieces like this one. So if you're interested in that workshop, the link is going to be in the description below.